Hi guys, I'm Phil Sturpey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. The AWS Toolkit is an extension for Visual Studio that makes it easier for developers to develop, debug and deploy .NET applications using Amazon Web Services. So the first step is to visit this page, which is at awsamazon.com slash Visual Studio. And there you'll find a button that allows you to download the toolkit. OK, so that's now downloaded. It took just under a minute, I think. And here's the installer, this MSI file. So let me run that. And just work my way through the wizard. Accept the license terms. As you can see, the installer is going to install SDKs for a variety of .NET frameworks, including 4.5, but also for Windows RT and Windows Phone 8. It's also going to install some samples. I'll take the defaults and click Next. Then Install. And after a minute or so, the wizard's ready. OK, let me launch Visual Studio. As you can see, we've been offered a short video on using the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. So if I just close that one down, so let me click on View, and I'm going to select AWS Explorer. So now that window's popped out, I've just, excuse me, I've just pinned that. Okay. Now, in order for Visual Studio to help work with my account, we need to configure it with some account information. And as you can see, I've got the option to add in a user. So let me click on Add an Account. At this point, I'm able to specify the credentials for a user. In an earlier video, I created an IAM user called Frank, who is a member of a developers group. So if I put Frank's name here, what I now need to do is supply credentials. When you create an IAM user account, you're giving a once only opportunity to store the credentials. And in fact, if I come down to my downloads folder, here the credentials are stored. So if I just open that with Notepad, here we can see the access key and secret key, which I can give to Visual Studio. Now there's one other piece of information I need, which is an account number. When you create an account with Amazon Web Services, you have a root account. And the key credentials there are an email address for the ID and then a password. But each root account is assigned an account number. And it's that that needs to go in here to be associated with this IAM user. To locate the account number, you need to visit your account in the console. And then click on the My Account link. And on this page, there's quite a lot of information, but the information we need is this account number here. There are a number of locations you can get this from. Let me just copy that for now. For example, if you go into IAM, you can find it in the IAM user sign-in link as well. But now I have that value. I'll jump back into Visual Studio, and I'll paste in the account number. There we go. So this is creating an identity within Visual Studio that is associated with an IAM account in Amazon. Let me just return back to show you for a second. Because there is indeed a user called Frank. I created him in an earlier video where I was looking at creating users for developers and getting their access keys and secret keys. In fact, during that video, I did forget to add him to the group. So let me add him to the developers group. That's better done. So within Visual Studio, these are Frank's access key and secret key. It makes sense for the display name to be the same. And that is the AWS account that that IAM user belongs to. So let me hit OK. 
As you can see in Visual Studio, I now have access to a variety of AWS services associated with my account. So for example, I could open up S3. Now if I try and access S3, I'm getting access denied. Now Frank is actually a member of a group called Developers that does have access to S3. And so we should be able to access it from here. But in fact, the Developers group doesn't have access to S3. Let me just take you back. If we look at the Developers group, and look at permissions, then in fact this group only has permission for one particular bucket in S3. And it's far too granular for Visual Studio to cope with. So let me create another group. I'm going to call this group S3 Developers. The main intention here is that this group have got full access to S3. So if I look at my set piece list here, if I come down and find S3, I'll just go for S3 full access, which is more than I'd like, but it's going to allow me to work in Visual Studio. So select, continue, create the group. What I'll now do is go to users, and I'll select Frank again, and add him to the S3 developers group. Okay, so that should be applied straight away. If I come back to Visual Studio and just refresh and access and access S3 now, as you can see, we can see all of the buckets. So although it's ideal to have specific policies for particular users or groups, Visual Studio isn't quite that granular, or should I say the toolkit isn't quite that granular. So if you want to be able to access S3 from within the Explorer, then you're going to have to use a user here that's got access to all of S3, not just one particular bucket. If you weren't using the Explorer and were just simply writing code, then you could come up with a better plan as far as privileges was concerned. Before I go, let's just take a quick look at some of these other services because this isn't an exhaustive list of the services available in Amazon Web Services. As you can see, we have CloudFront, DynamoDB, EC2, RDS, and so on. These are considered the usual suspects. In other words, the services that you're likely to want to interact with from within Visual Studio. You want to be able to see the buckets. You want to be able to see the AMIs or the instances. Well, there you have it. In this video, I've shown you how easy it is to download and install the AWS Toolkit for Visual Studio. I'll shortly be producing a similar video to show how to download and install the AWS Toolkit for Eclipse. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to comment on my blog and Facebook page. Perhaps you could suggest more video topics. Most of all, don't forget to subscribe to keep up with my videos as I release them. Bye for now.